Jesus, he's on quite bloody mob here. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Alan Madden, Gadigal Elder. Minister, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for my first song, <laughs> nah. Married man, <laughs> 10 children, 26 grandchildren and 17 great great. <laughs> Makes me cry. Ah. Found out what caused it and we stopped. <laughs> Born and bred in Redfern, capital of Sydney. <laughs> Aboriginal, black, Redfern, follow manly. <laughs> no. Rabbit ass. Welcome to country to me is always an honour and a pleasure. Just to give you a little bit of an insight of where you are and who we are. As with all welcomes, firstly I'd like to acknowledge our First Nations and traditional owners of the lands that you may have come from or work upon and pay my respects. To all our Aboriginal elders, all elders, past and present, also pay my respects. To all our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander brothers and sisters, from whatever Aboriginal or island nation you may have come from, welcome to Gadigal. And to all our non-Indigenous brothers and sisters here today, a very warm and sincere welcome to you to Gadigal. No matter where you've come from, whether it be across the seas, across the state, or across town, once again, a very warm and sincere welcome to you to Gadigal. And as I've mentioned many times before, was, is, and always will be Aboriginal land. Only three things sure than that, coming, taxation and going. It's an honour and a pleasure to be here today to welcome one and all to Gadigal. Gadigal is one of 29 clans of the Eora Nation. The Eora Nation is bounded by nature's own, the Hawkesbury River to the north, the Pian to the west, and George's River to the south. And in between those three mighty rivers is the Eora Nation. And in that nation, there are 29 clans. And the clan's land we're on today is the Gadigal. On behalf of the Land Council and of the Gadigal mob, once again, a very warm and sincere welcome to you to Gadigal. There's an old Aboriginal saying out there and I think it's very appropriate for you mob here today. They say, where there's a will, there's relatives. <laughs> and as you travel across these traditional lands and waters, may the spirits of our ancestors guide, look over you and keep you safe. So once again, on behalf of the Gadigal mob, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And thank you, Uncle Alan, for that characteristically warm and very generous welcome to country. I'm Adrian Collette and it's my immense pleasure to be your MC today. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge some people who are with us today. This is going to be a bit of a roll call, but they are all great contributors to what we're about to launch, or they're about to be great contributors to what we are about to launch. First and foremost, the Honourable Tony Burke, MP, Minister for the Arts. You can applaud the Minister, but no one else, so we'll be here for a lot longer than 45 minutes. <laughs> Senator Sarah Hanson Young, colleagues from the Office for the Arts, with whom we work so closely and so collaboratively. I also want to acknowledge the heads of a number of government agencies who are here today Annette Pittman, CEO of Creative New South Wales, Claire Phoebe, CEO of Creative Victoria, Kirsten Herring, Deputy Director General Arts Queensland, Jennifer Lather. The Director of Arts South Australia, 
And I acknowledge them because they do great work, but also because we work so closely with them. And what we're about to launch today gives us a platform to work even more closely and more collaboratively across the nation. Councillor Emma Davis, City of Sydney, and fellow councillors from the City of Sydney, and Robert Morgan, Chair of Creative Australia. Wesley Enoch, Deputy Chair of Creative Australia. And I'm going to take a moment to announce the other Australia Council board members, Caroline Bowditch, Courtney Stewart, Amanda Jacks, Lindy Lee, Kitty Taylor, Caroline Wood, Stephen Found, Christine Simpson-Stokes, Alex Demos, Rasheen Garnon, and Philip Watkins. Thank you for what you're about to take on. I want to acknowledge Larissa Berendt, who's chair of our First Nations strategy panel, so vital to the work of the Australia Council and Creative Australia. I want to acknowledge Kate Jenkins, Chair of Creative Workplaces Council. Kate, thank you for accepting the Minister's invitation to chair this council. We are so fortunate to have your experience, expertise and commitment to what is so important to our industry. And I also want to acknowledge your fellow council members, Tony Ayres, Fiona Donovan, Ruth Hazelton, Michelle Rice, Tina Lavroanos, and Bjorn Stewart. Thank you all. And uh, I also want to acknowledge the members of the Music Australia Council, which I will have the honour to chair, uh, and look forward, to, look forward to it hugely. But welcome to Lisa Baker, Daniel Caruana, Michael Chug, better known as Chuggy, Petrina Convey, Fred Leone, Nathan McClay, Sophie Payton, better known as Gordy, Fred Alale, I look forward to working with you all and thank you for taking the responsibility. To former chairs of the Australia Council who are here today and Creative Partnerships Australia, which is now part of Creative Australia, thank you for being here and Rupert Meyer especially for flying up um, from Melbourne today. And former CEOs of the Australia Council, uh, Jenny Bott, I know is here, Michael Lynch is here, Thank you for your great contribution, not only to the Australia Council, but to the arts and the creative life of the nation. And I want to acknowledge two people who uh, are here today because they are also funded by the federal government and they're important cultural organisations. Graham Mason, CEO of our sister agency, Screen Australia, and David Anderson, Managing Director of the ABC. Thank you all for being here. And of course, a very warm welcome to you all people who are here in the theatre, and the couple of thousand people who have registered to be here online. I want to thank our Auslan interpreters, Yasmin Dandachi and Will Tapp for being with us today. And a huge thank you to the Sydney Theatre Company and Executive Anne Dunn in particular for accommodating us during what is a very, very busy season. We're very grateful. It's a great testament to the camaraderie of the Australian creative industries to see so many different sectors represented here today. For 50 years, the Australia Council has invested in Australian art and creative practice. And for 50 years, investment in First Nations culture has been central to its purpose. Our national cultural policy, Revive, puts First Nations first. So please welcome the Executive Director of First Nations Arts and Culture, Francesca Cubillo. Thank you, Adrian. Good morning, everyone. Thank you to Uncle Alan for such a beautiful welcome to country. And as a First Nation woman from the top end regions of Australia and on behalf of my ancestors, the Yanua, the Bardi, the Larikia and the Waterman, I want to take this opportunity to acknowledge that we stand on unceded lands. I want to welcome and say hello and acknowledge the First Nation people who are in this audience today and also acknowledge those who are joining us online. It is lovely to gather here today on these unceded Gadigal lands 
and I want to acknowledge and pay my respects to elders past and present, and to the great many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander friends in the room and joining us online. Today is a historic occasion, and the building, the beginning of a bold new chapter for arts and creativity. As we look to the future, we must always acknowledge the legacy of those who have gone before and respectfully honour those First Nation leaders and elders who have worked tirelessly across the last 50 years. The National Cultural Policy Revive sets out the Australian Government's vision of a place for every story and a story for every place, giving us the opportunity to share our past and to define our future. The stories and songlines of Australia's First Nation people, these songlines and stories have crisscrossed this vast continent since time immemorial and are the beating heart of First Nations culture and are at the centre of Australian arts and culture today. The first pillar of this policy, First Nations First, is very timely as we celebrate 50 years of investing in First Nations arts and culture and supporting First Nations self-determination through the Australia Council, very soon to be Creative Australia. We build on that legacy, and beginning in September, with the cultural oversight of our existing First Nation Arts and Culture Strategy Panel, led by our remarkable chair, distinguished Professor Larissa Barrett, who is present here today, we will engage extensively and consult with First Nations arts and culture sector, seeking their advice and input on the appointment of the new board and the development of a new investment framework. I look forward to kicking off this important work soon, but now I have the great pleasure and privilege of placing First Nations storytelling at the heart of today's event as I introduce you to two bachelor songmen whose music pairs shape sharp poetic rhythmic lyrics fused with Aboriginal Creole and soaring vocals. Please give a big warm welcome to Birds and Fred Leon. Thank you, Fred. Birds and Danielson, that was the first uh, track about to be released, so we wish you well and look forward to hearing more. Colleagues, today's a day for recognition, I think. Recognition of the tireless advocacy of the people who work in our creative industries who have fought for and defended the importance of what we all do. Recognition of the important role played by an engaged government that has listened and responded through their new national cultural policy, Revive. Recognition of Australia's artists, certainly. And recognition of the immense cultural, social and economic value that our artists inspire. As I think everyone who's part of the creative industries, who's worked in the creative industries, understands when you invest in creative skills and practice, you invest in something still bigger. You invest in our nation's identity, our prosperity, and our place in the world. I remember something Minister Burke said when announcing Revive. He said that a cultural policy is not an arts minister's policy, it's a whole of government policy, which requires a whole of government response because it speaks to, it recognises the value of our culture. And it, acknowledge, it acknowledges that creative skills and practice forge our cultural identity and give it expression. Contemporary Australia is changing fast, and it is changes, and as it changes and grows, it's imperative that our creative industries continue to change and grow with it. That's what increased investment will enable. We will deepen our engagement with artists and with the vital organisations, businesses and markets that sustain them. We will work with philanthropists 
and collaborate and co-invest with industry partners, we will deepen our engagement with more diverse audiences in more places, a place for every story, a story for every place. We will be able to do more with more. We understand the many challenges still present after the cruel disruption of recent years. I'm more than ever grateful for the perseverance and sheer hard work of so many of you here today. But knowing that our artists and creative workers will be better supported and respected, will in a word be better recognised, this motivates and excites us all about the future. This feels like a pivotal moment in our history. It's certainly a pivotal moment in the history of our national arts investment and advocacy body. Thank you for being here, and we look forward to working with you all to invest in and build Australia's creative future. And now to share her wisdom and her words with us, please welcome to the stage the bank from the Bankstown Poetry Slam, Sarah Mansour. In a free poetry workshop I attended in October 2013, I read a new poem out to Luca Lesson. I don't recall exactly what the piece was, but I do know it was written in the third person. It wasn't my truth. Adjusting his slouchy beanie, sprawling all your scented curls underneath and with the char tenderness characteristic of a poet, he looked me dead in the eyes and said, Sarah, tell your own story. At the time, I didn't get it. What could be so interesting about my story? Nothing so interesting about all the things that I have witnessed endure in this foreign soil that even bloomed untended. The jacaranda trees, the frangipanis, the bougainvilleas sighing into the backyard memory of my fibro childhood home, spilling over into the stitches in our sides Five of us girls in two bedrooms, sticky with sweat and sweet blossom water. It was a sliver, or a promise, or a dream, or all of the above. We didn't have much, but we had each other. On the outside, we were villains, but on the inside, we were princesses and superstars and victors singing Shakira at the top of our lungs and building our own blanket kingdoms, commanding the future with cerulean-tinged ambitions. Ancestored by fatigue, you can't say we never tried. Hills hoist spinning those clotted cream dreams back into the skies. Silent observer to all the traditions carried, inherited, dropped, and forgotten, the melodic and the melancholic, the ache of the percussion carrying at least three generations worth of nostalgia. And would you have listened to that song if I sang it for you then? I mean, at school we were, t we were encouraged to write about potions and sirens, never what we knew about scriptures and seven spices. Nothing so interesting about the truth of the fact that my parents were raised by war and I was raised by them and my childhood was characterized by its violence. It does its best not to forget the people that survive. Memory is both our only inheritance and our birthright. We were told that we were either too much or not enough. Stories for centuries, bursting out of scenes and silos, springing onto slam stages, and apparently we were doing what was not real poetry. I guess that's why I was writing some abstract shit. Never thought there was anything interesting about the snaking land around Salt Pan Creek. Sinking in the centre, weighed down by our gutturals, held, tired and scared. I'm not trying to paint a picture. I'm trying to draw a map with hazy outlines that show the approximate corners of the only paradise I've ever wanted. 
the one where I am finally not ashamed and mum's smile is forever pistachio green and it is 2004 and everyone, even my dad, who knows nothing about the NRL, is proud of the doggies. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that if you lean in close enough and breathe quiet enough, you can hear the sidewalks cracking and every dead end opening up to a universe where my auntie's laugh and her hips are never too loud. Where garlic and coriander is simmering away in every kitchen. Fingers are dipped into Turkish coffee to sweeten it in jest. And you can have this cardamom indulgence too. Yes. You can watch my tater's hands cause zucchini memories out before it's too late. Gold bangles clinking, unfurled prayer mat shimmering, protracting prayer from parched lips, and nobody flinches at these, these public acts of worship. And the girl living all of this grows up into the woman that stands on stages performing poems about her grandma and banks down and love and revolution, asking herself for years, is anyone even listening? Turns out someone was. And now it's the case. Time for a place to celebrate every story and a story to fill every place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, we commissioned Sarah to write something for this occasion and uh, she's written everything really, hasn't she? It's beautiful. Um, now, now, most importantly, um, after hearing that poetry, I want you to welcome the Minister for the Arts, the architect uh, of Revive, and indeed Creative Australia. Please welcome the Honourable Tony Burke. I had more voice before I heard that. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, thank you so much to Alan Madden for Uncle Alan for welcoming us to country. I think welcome to country, when you look at some of the recent public discussion, it's so easy to forget what a generous thing it is. You think of all the things that could be said, and time after time the words we hear are welcome. It's an extraordinary act of generosity. And we find similar generosity in the Uluru Statement from the Heart, a generous extension to walk together to the rest of the nation. And I'm very pleased to be here before you as a member of a government that is part of wanting to walk that walk with the rest of Australia with a generous response in the referendum later this year. To my colleague, Senator Sarah Hanson-Young, to everybody who is here, the creators and those who provide the platform for the creators of Australia, uh, to uh, the, the new chair of Creative Australia, Robert Morgan, and the, the CEO, Adrian Collette, uh, but also for all the people who play the different roles within there, uh, Larissa Berendt, uh, and of course, Francesca Cabillo, and also the the, the Australia Council royalty that's here in Jenny Bott, Michael Lynch and Rupert Meyer. What we start today is only possible because of the foundations that were already built. It means a lot to me that we're launching Creative Australia here at the Sydney Theatre Company. As a kid, I used to save up my paper run money. And on one occasion, I had to save up for months and months to be able to buy the ticket to Nicholas Nickleby. Uh, something in the order of 10 hours of live theatre. And as you walked along the wharf to get to this theatre, you would have gone past a photograph of that production. The Sydney Theatre Company was a big part for me of opening up a world where you could be taken through that roller coaster of emotions where live performance would live as we do, in the moment. There was no pause, there was no rewind, there was no chance to go back and see the identical show. It lived in the moment, and that mattered. 
the last time I went out with my mum uh, was to see the production across the road, the Sydney Theatre Company production of Gross and Klein. And more than 10 years ago now, and we went through all the emotions of Kate Blanchett's extraordinary performance there together. And so I'm much more comfortable at this venue in the seats that you're in than where I am right now. Because my love of what this portfolio brings is not as a producer, it's as a receiver. Uh, I actually went to my careers advisor saying I wanted to be a theatre director. Um, the careers advisor lied to me, said there wasn't a course. I've, I've, I've sort of got over it. <laughs> uh, but I've found another way to contribute. Uh, and the contribution that we now launch today is not simply the next chapter. It's a different way of doing things. It builds on all those foundations that I referred to. But now, instead of having the old system of Australia Council there for the funded sector, creative partnerships there for the philanthropic sector, and commercial world out on its own, we bring all three together in one body, in one organisation. Because let's face it, it's the same workers, it's the same audience all there, whether it's government funded, whether it's philanthropic or whether it's commercial. And a whole lot of productions are a mixture of all three. This creates a body that can be dedicated simply to Australian stories, simply to Australian creativity in all its forms. The new board, and I'm so pleased with what we've managed to do, I want to pay tribute to those people who are on the previous Australia Council board who, who have not stayed on. Uh, we've managed to keep roughly half, but in producing a new board, we had to make some difficult decisions and none of it is a reflection in any way on those who haven't stayed on with the new board and I'm deeply grateful for their service to the arts in Australia. But for those in the, in the new organisation that we now have, we have Robert Chairing, we have Alex Demos staying on, we have Christine Simpson-Stokes staying on. People who've made an extraordinary contribution already. And then with the new people coming on, people such as Wesley Enoch, Lindy Lee, Courtney Stewart. We're reaching all sections of the arts, we're reaching all sections of creativity, and we know we have merit because we have a board that looks like modern Australia. We know that gives us merit. Similarly, with Music Australia. Adrian's gone through, through all the names, but to have performers like, like uh, Fred Leone, who's already performed on stage tonight, going onto the board of Music Australia with other performers, uh, like I've been a, a personal fan for a long time of Sophie Payton, who performs of Gordon, and of course of uh, Danielle Carrarana, but also to be joined by someone who's been so much a part of the commercial world of music in Michael Chugg gives us a chance with Music Australia to do something that has always been a limitation of the old Australia Council. And that was it never quite found a way of leveraging into the commercial contemporary music world. And our concept was, in fairness, well, it's commercial, it will look after itself. But as we've seen changes, as people have gone from purchases to streaming, as we've seen the challenge of overseas music where you don't have the automatic audience that you have in Australia, as we've seen an increasing reliance on live performance and festivals, we need an organisation that guarantees those contemporary musicians are always Music Australia will be charged with that job and with the board that's there, I know they're going to do it well. But the music industry was also the industry where some brave performers, including Dina Lynch, who, who helped us with the work on Revive, made clear that the workplaces that were telling tough stories were also often being unacceptably tough workplaces and unsafe workplaces. And this is why it was important for us to, and for me personally, to depart from 
what had always been the way I'd advocated for the portfolio. I used to get handed notes when I was first Arts Minister 10 years ago, and the notes if I was opening a visual art exhibition would take me through, uh, and I remember one of these at the National Gallery, it took me through uh, the complexities of the insurance between us and the overseas gallery, the Tate, uh, to get the works over here. The value of the tourism uh, that would come to Canberra as a result, the number of people we expected to, to visit, the total value of the collection. And I remember saying, but am I allowed to talk about the art? Like, is, is that allowed to be part of it? And, and got to a point where I figured, if the arts minister needs to rely on the economics, then we may as well give up. What I then saw during the pandemic was a realisation that for some people, because the work of artists brings so much joy, because the work of artists touches our hearts so deeply, that somehow we would not consider this a real industry or consider people in real jobs. And so I understand now we need to make the economic case too. And in making the economic case, we need to ensure that people are properly remunerated and that people have safe workplaces, safe from discrimination, safe from bullying, safe workplaces. And of all the people who, and there, there'll be seven or eight people here who all will say, they suggested this to me, and it's all true because I kept it really tight, so you can still own it. Uh, but the, the one name that kept coming up for creative workplaces was, do you think you can get Kate Jenkins to click chair? Uh, and the credibility and authority that comes to creative workplaces by it being chaired by the individual who was responsible for the Respect at Work report, I think can give everybody hope that we are serious now about delivering safe, proper workplaces for arts workers in Australia. And the board that Kate will chair, half workers representatives, half employer representatives, and workers like Bjorn Stewart, who will be known for many, through, for many of you, who's, who I've met through a whole lot of the First Nations work that the Media Alliance have been responsible for, Media and Arts Alliance. Uh, someone like uh, Michelle Hrees, who from Michael Castle Group, uh, was responsible for all the work that went through in the production of Hamilton in making sure that, that the safety of those workers was dealt with in a new way. We've got people who've been at the cutting edge of safe workplaces on that board, and it's going to make a difference. But I do send the message to every organisation out there, we are serious. As Creative Workplaces sets minimum standards, we expect you to keep to them, and if you choose to not keep to them, don't come knocking on the door for government money. We are serious about changing for a safer workplace for people who are in these creative industries. So over all of that sits Creative Australia. And Creative Australia now has the simple job. It's the agency charged with elevating the place of culture in Australia. Some of that will be the big grand production. Some of it will be stages like this, and I, I should give a special shout out to the set designer uh, of Constellations. I don't know what possessed you to match the colour scheme of the front cover of Revive, but I'm deeply <laughs> grateful for it. It's worked perfectly. Uh, but for every industry, right through to the most local, I had no idea as to the choices as to who would be put on stage today. Uh, I live in Punchbowl. I live in the suburb next to Bankstown. I've been rocking up as an audience member to Bankstown Poetry Slam for a long time. To see today Creative Australia choose Sarah Mansell as a representative of some of what is best in the arts in Australia, I think says something about where the best work often begins. For a long time, the whole discussion about making sure we covered the whole of Australia was how could we make sure that the big companies visit as many sites on the map as possible. And regional Australia is important, but it's not simply a destination for urban stories to get to. 
It's important that we're going out to the suburbs, we're going out to the regions, but not simply to perform other people's stories, but to create together. If we get this right, we will see each other, no matter who we are, we will get to see ourselves on stage, hear ourselves in song, read our own stories that reflect our homes in poetry, in narrative, on the screen. And through that, we will better see ourselves. We will learn about each other and it'll be the way that the world comes to know us. It's just over six months since the Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, stood up and launched Revive. At that moment, everybody had a, at the, the ESPY, and a lot of you were at the ESPY that day uh, in, in Melbourne, one of my, my favourite venues, and you took the copy of Revive like we were holding the program and the lights were going down. Well, today we launch. Today the lights come back on, the music starts playing and the work of Creative Australia begins. Centrepiece of Revive, Australia's new national cultural policy, is Creative Australia. A place for every story, a story for every place. A bigger, bolder champion and investor in Australian arts and creativity. Creative Australia takes forward the purpose of the Australia Council and builds on its ambitions to deliver greater impact in the creative sector. This includes dedicated investment at scale for First Nations, Music Australia and Writers Australia. Creative workplaces will support arts workers and better workplace culture. With artists at the heart of all we do, Creative Australia invests to build audiences and marketplaces, bringing together public and private investment to maximise impact. Creative Australia is our bold commitment to Australian creativity and culture in all its diversity. Creative Australia is committed to the development of our industries and their talent. Creative Australia is a platform for participation and connections, championing our stories to be told and yet to be told. Investing in the future of creative minds, forging economic growth and innovation through creativity, because creativity brings us together. Creativity allows us to imagine what's possible. Creativity benefits all our lives. Creative Australia is for the artist. Creative Australia is for us all. Wow. Uh, remind me never to follow uh, Minister Burke again. What an extraordinary speech and, a, and a, an incredible inspiration for all of us. Welcome to Creative Australia. We're here. Wow. It's fantastic. Um, we are incredibly excited about, uh, about this new name and this new, and this new look. Not, not just for, for the major reason, because it actually says what we're on about. It says what we're committed to do. It's com it, it, it's com it, it, it describes our whole mission, and that is to make Australia a truly creative country, which is fantastic. Great name, uh, great new look, but more importantly, a huge new remit. Firstly, and, and, and I'm sure everybody in this room and beyond will, will join me, in thanking Minister Burke, not only for his, his, his brilliant uh, speech this morning, but his inspiration for the whole industry. Um, and, and certainly for uh, the, the, in, the whole creative uh, uh, cultural policy, cultural policy for the government, which is not just for this sector, it is a whole of government policy, which is unbelievably important and fantastic going forward. Because it does put 
creativity at the centre uh, of, of government. And Creative at Australia is not just a, uh, a name change for the Australia Council. It's not just a facelift, it's indeed a brand new vehicle with a whole new remit, with a whole new organisation that's central to the national cultural, cultural policy. We've, talk, we've talked about Music Australia, a brilliant new organisation which is starting soon. Creative Partnerships, the philanthropy uh, unit, which we're now in, including within this Creative Australia. Um, creative Workplaces, which the Minister's described so, so clearly today. And of course, the whole First Nations Board, which stands up next year to oversee the, the, the arts and culture investment in First Nations. And then in 25, we've got Writing Australia. We are inspired by this new re remit, but equally, we accept the increased responsibility that goes with it. I want to make a commitment to everybody here on behalf of uh, Creative Australia that we are committed, in, 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 in absolutely committed, firstly, to nurture and develop the industry of, and, and, and creativity within it, to invest in it, and in particular look at new, new opportunities, both with commercial and in, in assisted areas, and including, of course, new works of scale. Incredibly importantly is to advocate on behalf of the industry and promote it, and most importantly to promote the importance of it to the future of and the welfare of socially, culturally and economically of this country. So we have a role there to promote and indeed advocate for it. Terribly important. And as Minister Burke has just indicated, to protect the people in it. Not only to protect them in the workplace, but also at the same time to develop a new generation of creative people and make creativity and a career in creativity, as he puts it, a real job. And to give our children the opportunity to work in the creative industries, which in the future is going to be more important than ever. This country can be and will be uh, a great creative nation if we get it right. Uh, we'll look different, as you see. Uh, we're very excited about our new, our new look. But more importantly, we are going to be different. Um, we are, we're not only going to look different, we're going to be bolder. I hope we're going to be entrepreneurial. And we're certainly going to be committed to investing in creativity. It is a new brand, it is a new purpose, and it is a new commitment. And I hope that we can all work together to make Australia a truly creative nation. Thank you.
So thank you to the Dance Makers Collective. Thank you very much. And, um, and thank you to all our wonderful artists today. Well, the curtain's up on Creative Australia. I want to thank a colleague, Dane Hanarap, who's calling the show, working backstage. Um, Dane is now looks after our events at Creative Australia. This was his first gig. He's done it brilliantly, so thank you, Dane. I also, again, want to thank the STC, who at short notice, and their technical crew that worked uh, with us to put the show on this morning. I want to thank you, above all, for being here. I want to thank you for the work you do, and we really look forward to working with you now that the curtain has gone up on Creative Australia. Let's get on with the show. Thank you. Thank you.